Hi IES, it's a great day for us to praise and worship God as a family. So parents and kids, please sit down together and enjoy the service because we have a special segment for you from IES Kids Church. Kids, remember to cuddle your parents so that they will feel warm and they will know that you love them. Happy New Year everyone! Hi, IS Jakarta. My name is Ian, and I visited IS uh, and give my testimony in 2018. I'm really blessed to be a part of IS Jakarta. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bless the service that we are part of today. We pray, Lord, that you would bless every person in this church who watching this service. Let Holy Spirit be with them and touch them. We pray for Indonesia, that your spirit will be over all in Indonesia. Let your love touch this country and let them know you and worship you. And bless this church with your love and grace, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Happy New Year, IES. We are so happy to have you guys joining us today. And I just want to invite all of you guys to worship our amazing God as we enter into this new year. So no matter where you guys are, let's get out our seats. Let us worship our amazing God. Are you guys ready? Come on, sing this with me. Here we go. Just one word. Just one word. You come storm that surrounds me. Just one word. The darkness has to retreat. Oh, just one touch, I feel a presence in hell. Just one touch, my eyes were open to see, my heart can't help but believe. There's nothing that a God can't do, there's not a mountain that He can move. Oh, praise the name. Start dreaming again. Just one touch. Just one touch. I feel the power of heaven. Just one touch. My eyes were open to see. My heart can help but believe. Come on, see it out. There's nothing that a God can't do. There's not a mountain that she can move. There's nothing that a God can't do. There's not a prison wall He can't break through. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that a God can't do. That's right. There is nothing that our God cannot do. So let us sing this next part in faith. Come on, church. For greater things, there's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like His power. There's nothing that a God can't do. Come on. There's 
God who is so faithful and you'll never fail us Lord I search the world but it could fill me with empty praise and treasures that fail never enough let's get our hearts right and you came along And pull me back together Let's focus our hearts on it Every desire is now satisfied Here in your love I don't know about you, but I just want to worship you Come on Oh, there's nothing Better than you There's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Just the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. There's not a place the mercy and grace won't find me again. Come on, sit up, church. Here we go. Oh, there's nothing. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. See, there's nothing, oh, oh there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. You turn crazy. 
Brilliant Adu for praying for us and for IES uh, today. You know, Brilliant is and his family are our missionaries in a restricted access country here in Asia. And uh, we are just blessed to see their ministry and all that they're doing. Blessed to be participating with them and supporting them. You can pray for them. They're here in Indonesia waiting out COVID restrictions and preparing to move forward. We look forward to see what God is doing through them and their ministry. We want to pray for needs. We know many of you come and sit in front of your screen and and have struggles in your life and things that you are disturbed about or things that need to be cared for by God himself. And we want to bring those needs before the Lord. In fact, we will have a button appearing there in the comment section in the in the church online platform for you to mark your special unspoken prayer requests. So if you have an unspoken prayer request, would you please push that button? We want to pray for you. We want to know that we're praying for people. And so we want to pray for you. We'll also be praying for those with anniversaries and birthdays today. Um, For those who have birthdays or anniversaries in the month of January, we want to pray for you. So let's come together and let's pray and let's ask God to accomplish his good work in each of us. Lord, we thank you for your great calling to serve you and to live for you. And we thank you, Lord God, that you've told us that you would be with us. And for those who have marked their unspoken prayer request today, Lord, I pray that you would show yourself very powerful and real in their lives, that you would minister to them, that your Holy Spirit would be very present with them, and they would be aware of your presence. For those that are sick, for those that are struggling, for those whose businesses are in difficult times, Lord, I pray that you would lift them up. I pray that you give them wisdom. I pray that you give them healing I pray that you would respond to their cry for help, Lord God, and that you would bless them, even right now, as we pray. Lord, for those who are celebrating their birthdays this month, we pray that you would encourage them. First and foremost, Lord, that you would help them to know that you are with them and that you are blessing them. I pray that you would draw them in their hearts towards a greater uh, desire for you, a greater growth in their walk with you, and a greater passion to serve you. I pray that this month would be a month where they would take very seriously your call for their service, and they would walk with you closer this month than they ever have in their life before, and it would beginning be the beginning of new things for them. And Lord, for those couples that are sitting there that are celebrating their anniversary this month, we pray that your blessing and strength would be upon them. I pray that you would help them to look at one another anew with an oppor- a desire to fulfill that opportunity to minister to their spouse, that they would recognize that Their spouse is one that they can minister to. And I pray that you would bless them as they bless one another and encourage one another in faith and in life. And Lord, there may be some who are celebrating anniversaries but are not sitting together today. I pray that you bring comfort and reconciliation for them. I pray that you bring peace and you would bring restoration. 
And I pray, Lord God, that you'd accomplish your miraculous work in their lives as well. And for all of us, as we begin this new year, we pray for relief. We pray for the end of the scourge of this virus. We pray for our hearts to be turned more and more towards you. We pray, Lord, that you would be glorified in our lives, that you would build your church, and that we would walk in strength with you every day in this year to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy New Year, everybody. Looking forward to another year of God's blessing and God's continued provision. We want to wish a, a really gracious New Year coming up. We hope that the things that we face in the coming year won't be as challenging for us personally, uh, all of us personally, as they were in this past year. But we know the goodness of the Lord will be there no matter what happens. So that's good to know, too. I want to just wish all of you well. And let's all pray this, this getting ready to go into 2021. Let's all pray that uh, the, the pandemic will end very, very soon. God bless you all. You know, before COVID, we were all just cruising along just fine, keeping things going. But then suddenly, we started dropping all the balls. Well, as a church, we've missed out on a few really important things, and that would especially include weddings. We have a lot of people in our church who've found a way to get married during the last nine or 10 months of COVID time. We haven't had the opportunity to acknowledge your wedding. So we would like to do that. So if you've been married since March, you had your wedding, you've got some pictures, we would like to acknowledge that. Please contact Sophie at the email here on the screen and send us a picture, your favorite picture from your wedding. And then on the third week of January, we're going to acknowledge all of those weddings. We are excited for you. We are excited for what God's doing in your life. And we want to celebrate you as a whole church. Contact Sophie. And let us celebrate you on the third week of January. What do you have? No. I'm not talking about the money you have in your piggy bank or how full your closet is or even whether you owned the latest gaming system. We are talking about the things that each of you has been given by a generous God who loves you more than you could imagine. God has given you time, time that you can waste or time that you can use wisely. Hello? Yeah, sure. I can help you for an hour. Be right there. God has given words, words that can hurt someone. Oh, I cannot believe you. Ah! Or to make someone's day. Way to go! You rocked it! God has given you unique talents and ability, gifts that you can ignore, or gifts that you can grow. Yes, God has trusted you with so much, and He's with you at every step of the way to help you use it wisely. When you show that you truly can be trusted with what is expected of you, others can see God at work in you. And that's why responsibility is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship 
is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Happy New Year 2021 from IS Kids Church. Live loud and responsibly for Jesus and we will see you next week. Bye! Happy New Year. Uh, 2020 is in the history books. Thank goodness. I think a lot of us would like to keep it there in the history books. Um, I heard someone say they stayed up Christmas Eve, not just to welcome 2021, but to make sure that 2020 leaves for good. I think we're all ready kind of to have this year done. But uh, God is still in control and uh, his plans work for the best. And so we know that his plans are always better than our plans. And he gives us what we want or something better. Um, I remember when I graduated from university uh, in America many years ago, I was still single and I was ready to kind of start looking for a wife in God's time. And I was going to be a minister and missionary. And so I was going to the South Pacific to the little island country of Samoa. And of course, I knew I wouldn't find my wife there. So I just told the Lord for the next couple of years, I'll serve there. And then when we get back to the States, then we'll get back to the hunt for the wife. So anyway, I arrived down in the South Pacific. My first Sunday there, I'm in the church. I'm looking around at the people. It's beautiful in the islands. And there she was. And a young lady named Iris Stanley was actually living in America, going to university, but she came home for the summers because she was bonded to the government for a full scholarship to her university in America. And she never planned on marrying an American, let alone a missionary. But long story short, our plans were not what ended up being God's plan. And believe me, God's plan was better than my plan. So uh, we may not understand things that are happening. It doesn't seem like it's the plan we would like immediately, but we always know that his plans are far better than ours, not just for now, but forever. And that's what I kind of want to talk to us about today. You know, uh, the Bible, God's word tells us not to plan too far ahead. In fact, in James, it says this. Now, listen, you who say, Today or tomorrow, we will go to this city or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin. You know, God understands that it's very hard for us to not worry. It's a human thing that we do. And uh, so he's, he's very compassionate that way, but he also wants to save us from needless worry and the waste of worry, which if I gave a title to my message today, that would be it, is the waste of worry. You know, uh, Jesus understands that we know, especially from the Sermon on the Mount, because he has a whole section on worry in his famous Sermon on the Mount. And I like to read from there, Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 19. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart's desires will be also. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So don't worry saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. 
but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness or right way of living, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Jesus understands that we worry about our family. We worry about our kids. We worry about our business and our job. He understands that, but he also wants to save us from needless worry that is a waste in our life that can sap our energy and cause us not to experience the abundant life that he has for us. Three times in his Sermon on the Mount, he says, he commands us, he warns us, don't worry. He knows we battle this temptation, but worry is never God's way or God's will. Number one, there's a couple of things that I want us to see that God, Jesus is not saying. When he says don't worry, he's not saying don't plan. There's nothing wrong with planning, okay? There's nothing wrong with, with us working hard and reaching our potential, planning for the future, planning for our kids' education, planning to, to grow our, our career or business. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem is when we think we can control that future completely. And, and number two, in fact, Jesus himself said, he said that, he planned ahead. He planned for the future of his church, for the gospel to spread around the world. He planned and made preparations for that. But it's not only that worry doesn't mean don't plan. When he says don't worry, it doesn't mean that he says don't care, don't have concerns. We want to have concerns and responsibilities. But there's a difference between careless living and carefree living. There's a difference between living responsibly and then allowing those cares and worries to, to, to control us and to take away the joy and the peace and the abundant life that he has for us. So worry does not mean don't plan. It doesn't mean don't care, okay? But we have realistic concerns and plans, but the future ultimately is out of our hands. And so it's in his hands. Jesus understands this. And we go on to see that in the future, we know that he has it in his hands. We know that God has a plan in hand for 2021. And so we do everything we can, and then he does the rest. But the problem is we, when we worry, we, we in our minds and our emotions, we create things that aren't even there yet. We're, we're trying to live in the future that doesn't even exist yet. We cross bridges that were never there. We try to climb mountains that are not there because we allow that into our world. The, the word worry, one of the, the definitions is it means to be pulled apart. And so we're torn apart. Instead of just living in the present, we're also trying to live in the future that we can't control, that we can't run, we can't operate. And so we try to fight life on two fronts, on, on two different you know, battle fronts. And so it tears us, it tears us apart. Jesus is saying, as we know in, in James as well, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So really, ultimately, when our life is in Jesus' hands, we have nothing to worry about. The waste of worry will just simply waste your life away. And that's what Jesus is saying. We all know the prayer of serenity. It's very simple. It says, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, to change the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And that's the kind of serenity and peace he wants to rule our hearts instead of worry, anxiety, stress. Now, there's several points that Jesus makes here. And number one is he's saying worry is unnatural. It's unnatural that we would think that somehow God can create this universe, he can create us, and he creates our bodies, which are fearfully and wonderfully made, and our brains, he creates the, the galaxy we live in, and all of the fine-tuning of the universe, and all of that, and yet he's not going to somehow provide for our daily living in this amazing life he's created. You know, just even our DNA that he created. And some of you probably know this, that if you, they say, if you stretched out the DNA code of all the information in us that makes us what we are each individually, if you stretched out that information, it would reach from the earth to the sun and back 600 times. Now, that, that, if, if God can do all of that, you don't think he can put rice in your belly and put clothes on your back and put a roof over your head 
And that's why Jesus is saying it's unnatural, it's illogical not to trust a God who created all this with such design and fine-tuning and gave you life and put you on this planet that is a privileged planet for life, and you don't think he's going to provide your daily needs. So he's saying it's unnatural, it's illogical. So God will take care of his creatures. You see, worry is man-made. Humans are the ones that worry. It's unnatural to try to control things that are out of our control. You know, imagine if you went around all day every day with an umbrella open over your head just because it might rain someday. It's silly, of course, but that's how silly worry is when you're trying to worry about things that may never exist in the future. You have no idea what's coming. So it's like walking around with an umbrella over your head the rest of your life. It doesn't make any sense. It's unnatural. It's illogical. You know, Jesus teaches us to live a day at a time, one step at a time. You know, Americans, we love our beef. And, you know, I thought about it. I thought, you know, I've probably eaten two or three cows in my lifetime, as many burgers and steaks as I've had. But obviously, I didn't eat those cows all in one shot, okay? I ate them one burger at a time, one steak at a time. And Jesus is saying, you take life one bite at a time. You don't try to bite off more than you can chew. And then he's saying, learn to live with that kind of peace and freedom, knowing that he's got everything in control that you don't have in control. I remember my mother, I was born in Africa, a missionary kid. And before my parents went to Africa, this is many, many years ago, my mother has said many times through the years, she said, if she had known what she was going to go through in Africa, my, my father almost died there. My sister almost died there. They went through all kinds of heartache and trouble and even persecution. If she had known all that she was going to go through in Africa before they left, she said, I never would have gone. I couldn't have handled knowing all that. I would have been overwhelmed. You know, sometimes we say, man, I wish I could know the future. No, you don't. You don't want to know the future. Imagine if a year ago you knew all that 2020 was going to hold and you had to take it all in at one shot. He's saying, look, I've got the future one day today. That's all you can handle one bite at a time, one plate at a time. And he's got the rest in his hands. And so that's what he's trying to say. Jesus is saying, look, live the abundant life I've created you to enjoy. Be thankful you don't know the future. And he talks about the wildflowers of the field. You know, these, these wildflowers, they just, they're out there and, and they just kind of sway in the breeze. You know, the thing that's amazing is human beings are the only creatures that don't trust our creator to take care of us. All of nature, all the other creatures, they just relax. They trust their creator. Wildflowers are out there just waving in the breeze. They keep looking up to the source of their sun and the source of their rain. And that's what Jesus is saying. He talks about the sparrows, the little birds. They were the least valuable, the cheapest animal in the market. For one copper coin, you could buy two sparrows. For two copper coins, copper coins, you got five sparrows. They threw a fifth sparrow in for free. They were that cheap. And Jesus is saying, you know what? God cares even for that free, cheap sparrow. If he cares for that sparrow, he knows when everyone falls, what do you think he's going to do for you? You creatures made in his image to live with him forever. So he keeps using these illustrations to show us his grand plan for us knows each of us individually, and we are his highest creatures made for eternal relationship with him. He's going to take care of us. Worry divides our minds. It tears us apart. And so we end up second guessing and, and not letting God be God. We need to remember he's God and I'm not. And my times are in his hands. This year is in his hands. 2021 is in his hands. He already has a plan in hand. From eternity, Jesus, God, had a plan in hand for this year. And so we have complete security in that, complete safety in that. And that's what he's saying. You know, the Bible says, doesn't say count your years. It says count your days. A day at a time is that's the way he designed us to live the abundant life he created us to share with him. And so he says, don't let worry steal 
your peace, your peace of mind, your joy. You know, we, we know in the, in the wilderness that God gave them manna daily. That's all he gave them was just enough for that day. And they had to trust him for the next day. We know the, the, the Lord's prayer where Jesus taught them how to pray. It was like, give us today this, our daily bread. That's all we need to worry about. So we don't have to worry about all of 2021, but he's saying, live with me, trust me, follow me. My plan is always better than your plan. God knows, we know that God knows what we don't know. And so we trust and follow his plan. That's what he desires for all of his children. You know, when Jesus taught the, 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 the Lord's prayer, it wasn't just a prayer with our lips, but it's the prayer of our life where that's our mindset. That's our state of our heart. That's our, our mode of, opera, of operation, our modus operandi, that we have that state where we live in that kind of peace and security in him. And we know that every day he's going to give it to us and we're seeking his kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's the whole, not just prayer of our lips, but prayer of our life. And that's what Jesus is trying to communicate. So number one, worry is unnatural. Number two, worry is unhealthy. You know, they have done medical studies and they say that a large percentage of diseases and illnesses, sicknesses, are from worry and anxiety. A large percentage ultimately come from that, from worry, uh, anxiety, fear, like, like headaches, high blood pressure, insomnia, not the ability to sleep. It goes on and on and on, the effects on our body, because it releases a poison in us. When we have this fear and this anxiety, this worry, it releases poison in our system. And eventually it takes its toll on our health. Worry is unhealthy. It's going against God's law of living, trusting our creator and our savior to take care of us. Some people, they really literally worry themselves to death. They worry themselves to an early grave. You know, everybody dies, but not everybody really lives because they didn't learn to live in his peace of mind with his joy and his love and knowing that they were secure in him. You know, in, in America, usually my wife and I, we buy used cars, but there's, there's a law, kind of a principle, I should say, a saying in the used car business, and it's that you buy miles, okay? You may buy a car that's almost new, but it may have high miles because it's been driven a lot. And so depending on the mileage, you know, that depends on the value or how much life is still left in that car. And some people, they may not be real old, but they have a lot of mileage on them. And a big part of it is they have lived their life in worry and stress and anxiety and anger and frustration instead of the peace of God ruling their hearts. And so he doesn't want us to have more mileage than we should at this juncture of our life. And so he wants us to, to set us free from that. You know, uh, they probably don't here in Indonesia, but um, in America, some people, I don't relate to it, but in America, uh, there are people who have pet mice. And uh, almost every pet mouse in their cage has a little wheel that they run on. Okay, and they've, they've studied and watched pretty much how much a mouse will run on that wheel every day. And in a lifetime of a mouse, he will run approximately 9,000 miles, that little mouse on that wheel. And at the end of his life, after 9,000 miles, guess where he's at? He's still on the cage. He's still on the wheel. He's not gotten anywhere. He's made no progress. And Jesus is saying, that's what worry does. It's unhealthy. It doesn't get you anywhere. It, it doesn't produce anything. And that leads us to our next point is that worry is unproductive. It doesn't really accomplish. It's, it, it never helps you. It only hurts you. Starting with your body as well as your experience of life. But we have to decide. We have to decide whether we let it in or not. You know, when China built its Great Wall, that is famous throughout the world. You can actually see the Great Wall of China from space. It is so long and so large. And so they did it to protect and keep their enemies from, from invading China. But they found that after they built the wall, they still had enemies invading quite regularly. And they found out why. And it wasn't the wall's fault. 
It was the guards' fault. The guards were being bribed by the enemies, and then the guards would just open the gates and let the enemies come right on in. They built this strong wall, but they didn't build guards with strong character and trustworthiness. And so the issue is we have to learn to guard the gates that come into our life. It's, it's a little poem that I read that kind of makes me, it's a simple poem, but I think it kind of says it. It says this, it's about a ship letting water in. It says this, all the water in the world, however hard it tried, could never sink a ship unless it got inside. All the hardships of this world might wear you pretty thin, but they will not hurt you one little bit unless you let them in. And that's what Jesus is saying. Don't let the cares of this world into your minds and your hearts. Your people drowning, so to speak, in the water of worry. They're trying to move through life through the water of worry. It's hard to walk in water. It's hard to run in water. But they're constantly moving through that worry and stress and anxiety. And that's what he's saying. Don't let it in. Don't let it invade you and steal your freedom. You can't move freely through life when you're strained and stressed with that worry. It will drag on you and drag you back from the life God has for you. But you know, it becomes our daily mindset, our daily mode of thinking and feeling and emotions. You know, my, my grandpa, he used to say, you know, if you look at a tree stump long enough, it'll move. <laughs> we see what we want to see. And worry is kind of like that. Our imagination starts to think of all the things that could go wrong if this happens, if that happens. And pretty soon we're seeing scary movies with our eyes shut in our minds and everything. You know, when you've had a bad dream, you wake up sometimes, you've had a nightmare and your heart is pumping because in that moment, in that dream at night, it was real to you. And that's what worry's like. It becomes real in our inner world. And we allow that to come in instead of guarding our hearts like God's word says. So Jesus is saying, look, at the beginning of this year, I want you to trust me. I've got a plan, not just for this world, but I've got a plan for you. You are a big part of my plan. And trust me, it's going to be a good one. It may not be exactly what you think. It may not be exactly what you expected, but don't worry about it. You do your best. I take care of all the rest. And that's what he's trying to say in our minds and hearts. So, Unfortunately, a lot of people, they live through a lot of trouble that, that never really happened. I remember Winston Churchill said, you know, whenever he'd start to worry, he remembered the man on his deathbed who said, I've had a lot of trouble in my life and most of it never happened. But he lived through the trouble in his mind and emotions because he let it in and constantly daily worried and stressed over things that weren't even in reality yet, but it was in the reality of his mind and his heart. And that's what Jesus is saying. Sometimes, I'll just throw this in, I think we need to be careful too, we worry about other people's opinions. Can I tell you something, and this is just human nature, you know, most people really don't think about you that much. Most people are interested in their life and their situations, and so they're not even thinking about you. Don't worry about people who aren't worried about you. But we need to learn that even if they do have an opinion of us, most of the time, their opinion of us is false. You know, they're just human beings. They don't know everything about us. They may have a negative opinion, but, you know, we're kind of like a hundred piece puzzle. And most human beings around us see two or three pieces of the puzzle of our, of our life. They don't know our hearts. They don't know our past. They don't know what we're going through. They don't know our, our job, our family, all the things that we're facing that they may form an opinion based on two or three pieces of that puzzle. And then they fill in all the other pieces, but they're just wrong. And so we worry about a false opinion about us. We know that God's opinion is the only one that matters. We all know we're to play and, and to, to live for an audience of one. My dad used to say, he said, please God, and you'll please the people God wants you to please. And when we learn to do that, it frees us from the worry about other people's opinions of us. Now, let me just add, that doesn't mean we're never open to any criticism. Sometimes people can make a good point. You know, I try never to take criticism personally, but I take it seriously. 
They may have something to say into my life that needs to improve or change or be corrected. But much of the time, people's opinions is based on very little information. So don't let it stress you. Don't fear people's opinions. So many of us are afraid of what people think of us. And Jesus wants to free us from that. If you're pleasing God, you're free. He's the only one that matters because he knows the truth about you and he knows your heart. Don't worry about the things you can't control. I, I remember this guy, he, uh, he thought he was going crazy and he was afraid of that and he's just worried about it. And so he went to a, a psychiatrist, a counselor, and he went to the psychiatrist and after he examined him, the psychiatrist said, uh, yeah, he said, I have to agree with you. Uh, you're crazy. <laughs> and the man got mad. And he said, I want a second opinion. He said, okay, you're ugly too. So, you know, sometimes we don't want to know what people think. And we learn just to be free from that. Live for God, that audience of one, please God, and you'll please the right people for the right reasons. He wants to free us from that. Only God knows the truth about us all. But worry is not just unnatural. It's not just unhealthy. It's, it's unproductive but it's also unbelieving. Worry is unbelieving. We're not trusting God to take care of us. You know, it's, it's the unbelievers that are worried about life and they're trying to secure their life with, with money and all of that. And yet money always fails. You know, it's the rest of nature that trusts their creator and the, our creator never fails. But can I tell you something? Money will always fail. It will fail to give you real peace of mind. It will fail to give you real joy. It will fail to give you real love and hope. Only your creator can do that. And so we learn to trust him alone. But many of us, we still don't fully believe that. So we kind of feel like we've got to kind of run our own life and make sure we're taken care of and make sure we're safe. So we got to do God's job for him. And that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, you have little faith. Trust your father just as Jesus trust his, trusted his father. You know, worriers are kind of like practical atheists. It's as if they don't really believe God is real or they don't believe God can really take care of them. It reminds me of the guy that uh, he was a, a worrier for years and finally the Lord dealt with him and he literally sat down. His name was George and he wrote a letter to God and he said this, very short, but it changed his life. He said, dear father God, Today, I hereby resign as general manager of the world. Love, George. He kept trying to control everything in his world, and he said it set him free. And he laughs a little. He said, you know, the, the amazing thing is God accepted my resignation. <laughs> he let me quit my job of trying to run the world and run the world of my life. And he said, I've been free ever since. So maybe some of you today, you need to write a letter of resignation to God and just say, I'm not going to keep trying to control my world. I'm not going to keep trying to control my life in a way that only God can. As I start this new year, he is in control. His plan is always better than my plan. He always gives me what I want or something better. And that's what he wants to free us with today. The answer is to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Now, the, right, the word for righteousness here in the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus uses, it, it really is referring to the right way of living. It means the way of living that, that God created us to live. When we are at peace with God and at peace with our, our fellow man, we learn to live his principles and we trust him with everything he will do and we just do what we can do. We know what, you know, there's, there's a very important principle that is in the Bible and it says this, God will do for you what you cannot do for yourself, but he will not do for you what you can. God wants us to be responsible human beings. He wants us to work. He wants us to, to do what we can for our families and our job and our career, but there's a limit to what we can control on that. And once we've done that, then we're in our father's hands. Jesus learned that. I mean, we see it again and again. He was constantly just trying to, and, and succeed, successfully did, be at peace with his father. He was focused on his, his father's will. That's why he's asleep in a boat in the middle of a storm that's threatening their lives. How can he sleep in a boat like that? Because he knew he was right with his father. He was living and seeking God's righteousness or right way of living. 
How could he be at peace with all that he went through, the persecution, the rejection, finally, even his, his suffering and his, his crucifixion? I remember, uh, I remember a, a theologian some years ago, he's from America, but he was asked, if, if you had to describe Jesus in one word, what would it be? And it surprised everyone what he said. He said, I'd probably say relaxed. And I was like, relaxed? He's like, yeah, because he was at complete peace with his father and peace with everyone. He knew he was doing what he was supposed to do. And he was in line with God's plan and will. And I thought, wow, if we could learn that for 2021, to do what he wants us to be doing, but to be relaxed, knowing we're in his hands. He's going to take care of everything else. His plan will unfold. Jesus wants us to live relaxed, at peace with him and with each other, just as Jesus was. I grew up in a, a family that was in the ministry, and my parents were ministers and missionaries and good friends with Pastor Dave and Pastor Dave's father. And But my father's father, my grandfather, was, was also a very godly man, and he was an evangelist back in in the Great Depression in America. And uh, I'm sure most of you know, it was just a very, very difficult time. And as a preacher, it was very hard. And there were times when they had no food in the house at all. But my grandfather just completely trusted God no matter what was happening in the economy, what was happening in society. And he would be down, this is up north in America where it's cold and they burned coal for heat and, and it's very, very cold there in the winters. And they pretty much just lived on potatoes and, and they would be have an empty coal bin, empty potato bin, no food, nothing to heat. And he would still be just praising God. He'd yell, hallelujah, hallelujah. And he would many times, have my grandmother set the dinner table with all the kids, my dad, one of them, and they had no food on the table. They had nothing to eat, but he'd say, set the table. He said, God's gonna take care of us. And there are so many stories of at that moment, I remember one in particular, they were sitting at a table with no food, all set, and a knock on the door, and there was a farmer. He wasn't even a Christian. He was driving by in his wagon. This is way, way back. And he said, you know, I was just thinking, maybe that, uh, that preacher could use some potatoes. He had a big bag, a 20-pound bag of potatoes. Right at that moment, my grandfather had learned to seek first God's kingdom. Paul said, I've learned how to live with joy in plenty and with very little, in prosperity and in poverty. And at this year, at the beginning of this year, we, we're coming out of 2020. We may be kind of uh, afraid and worried about wading into the waters of 2021. Don't be. Your father has a plan. He's in control of your life. And he is working everything for his best plan for us forever. Seek ye first the kingdom and his right way of living. And he will give you everything you need everything you want or something better. Let's be relaxed as we start this year. Do everything he wants us to do, but know that he is in control and he's gonna work it for good. And he has a beautiful plan for each of us this year. I'd like us just to pray right now in closing. And Lord, I just pray for my brothers and sisters today. I pray that if there are those I know that some have really gone through pain and heartache this past year of 2020. And Lord, you feel that pain. You are a God of compassion. You came and lived exactly like us. You have gone through virtually every kind of pain, loss, disappointment that we do. And I pray for those today that have heartache as they leave 2020. But I also pray that your peace, your promise, would fill their hearts and they would learn that you are in control, they are in your hands and you have a plan in hand for them today. And there may be even some today that, that they can't really say they have that security because they've never truly, totally surrendered their life into your hands. And so I pray right now that at the beginning of this year, they would finally say, I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm gonna become the father's child today. I wanna be born again today. I want that security knowing I don't have to control everything, but my father is in control. And if that's you today, please just contact the pastoral staff and here at IES that we can encourage you and, and help you and pray with you. 
But I just pray that every one of us, as we enter this year, Lord, I pray that you would give us that kind of confidence that you, if you take care of little sparrows and flowers of the field and all that, Lord, you are gonna take care of us. You freely gave us your son. Will you not freely give us everything we need and long for today? In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Happy New Year. God bless you. to come